and welcome to my latest video. In this video I'm going to be painting one of the new Leagues of Votan models that Games Workshop sent me and in this case it's a Hearthkin Warrior. Uh, so I picked this one just because I think he looks really cool uh, and he has his um, arms separated so you can see uh, clearly see his chest area um, without any of the weapons or anything covering that up so it's just quite a nice model to paint. I also really like the look of the, uh, the face masks. They're a little bit weird. It looks like they have sort of a face kind of uh, sculpted into them already uh, or if not a face they also look like they have little uh, visors sculpted in there as well so some quite strange markings in it but that all just means it'll be kind of interesting to paint it with some of the highlight placement. To start with I'm using Rhinox Hide and I'm uh, kind of blocking in <coughs> the um, the face mask however I am focusing more towards the left hand side of the uh, of the face shield because I'm going to be doing some quite strong uh, sort of light direction painting with this model. So the lights are going to be coming from the top left and to kind of like show how that will work on the model all, all of the uh, painting will be all the highlights on the painting will be pushed up towards the top left as well and the way uh, an easy way for you to kind of get an idea of how that will work on your model is to just hold it under a lamp and to rotate it until the main highlight so the highlight that will hit the head area um, kind of just lands in exactly the right place that you want it and then you can map out the other, where all <coughs> the other highlights are on the model um, so you'll see like uh, you can kind of see it in the video almost actually how the highlights land on the shoulders and on the top part of the power fist and the tops of the knees things like that like it's not going to be uh, like a perfect representation because obviously paint uh, reflects light in a slightly different way to how you know whatever the um, materials of his armor and uh, legs and things like that are made of so you know you have to take it with a, a grain of salt when you're using um, the uh, light refle reflections on a model as reference but it gives you a good starting point um, and then you know you can modify them as you go along so after I quickly uh, blocked in the faceplate I'm also uh, just very quickly going over all the armor panels and I'm using Sotec Green for this uh, you might notice how I'm painting it looks a very sort of rough style to start with and uh, this is something that I'm doing just because I was fed up of doing really smooth painting for the Golden Demon with my uh, Loon Boss on Squid Copper so this was a, a nice break for me where I could just be I don't want to say lazy but very loose with the brush marks I'm making so you can see here uh, I, I'm not caring at all about catching other details um, you know just slopping the paint on it's getting quite uh, distinct sort of texture marks almost and we'll be using those as I go along to uh, you know to, to give the armor a sort of a worn um, look as well as you know a little bit of texture to it and that will just make it a bit, you know a bit more interesting to look at and it also will allow me to separate out uh, the different materials so the armor will be very worn and you know corroded and things whereas the uh, the face will be really smooth and then you'll have um, the trousers or pants um, if you're American they, they'll be kind of like just smooth and black with dirt on the bottoms and things so all the different surfaces will stand out quite uh, clearly by the end uh, and it's just a, a fun way of painting as well I think it's very uh, sort of freeing to be able to kind of just slap paint on the model and not worry about catching things and you can then refine it as you go along and oddly enough when you paint like this so it might not be ideal for you know for something for a golden demon because uh, you do have to spend a long time tidying everything up and there probably will be bits of paint that get in the wrong places but uh, generally you can still take this style of painting and push it to a very very high level uh, while still maintaining a lot of all the the fun marks that you've um, placed on the model at the same time uh, you can see here that I'm going to be painting in layers and as I add more layers I'm going to be using just it's just this one color at the moment so the Sotec green but I'm going to be building up the layers in the stronger highlight parts again and that will create more opacity in those areas so because the paint's quite watered down it's around about uh, one maybe one and a bit parts of water to one part paint so just slightly more water to paint uh, it just gets it quite uh, thin and Sotec green isn't uh, a very opaque uh, paint color anyway but that means that because it's quite thin I can do multiple layers and as the layers increase uh, so the first layer that you put down you can very easily see the black primer showing through 
and in the second layer you see a little bit less but the trick is to not cover the whole area again with the the paint and you just kind of like looking for the highlight placement and building up those areas and each time you build it up you get it smaller and smaller and you basically create a transition and create highlights and shadows but just using one color of paint and relying on the uh, you know the primer as well so it's you know it's quite a nice way of doing it um, and if you want to do just some sort of quick and easy army painting uh, you could do the same sort of thing because uh, you know it still looks quite good in fact it looks um, particularly good for tabletop painting when you hold it from a distance and you see this very high contrast uh, directional lighting even without adding extra uh, paints to it to uh, you know make it even brighter so it's something to bear in mind as well you, you know you don't have to um, just go for a very uh, simple styles with army painting you can have a bit of fun with what you're doing and you'll c you kind of see that by the time I've uh, finished blocking in all the the blue on this or the sotek green rather uh, you know it'll still look quite nice and then you can decide if you want to take it any further for army painting with the, the highlights that you might as well one thing you just saw there on the backpack so I put a layer down and then I quickly added another layer try not to do that too much because if you add wet paint on top of an area that's still that the paint hasn't dried on uh, you're probably going to damage the layer beneath it because uh, it'll lift up some of that wet paint so there's the armor um, like mostly base coated and now we're just going to spend a little bit of time working on the face plate uh, i like to do this you know work on the uh, the faces of models uh, when i've only done a small amount of work on them because I find that because the face is such an integral part of the model you know it's the focal point uh, it's a, the part that everyone's going to look at and kind of judge the whole model based on uh, the quality of the the face so um, you know it's, it's worth spending a bit of time on that and if you can get that looking nice early on then you can sort of make the rest of the model play off of that and you can even be a little bit lazy on the rest of the model because people won't notice it as much you know you could paint the boots really rough and in this case I don't spend that much time on the boots um, but the boots are you know not an important part on the model uh, no we're not talking golden demon here though like if you're doing golden demon then of course spend as much time as you can on every part of the model but in terms of this which is just like a fun project for me then you know just spending the more time on the face and less time on areas that you know people just aren't going to care about uh, you're going to get kind of like the same sort of response uh, from people looking at it and even for me when I look at it uh, so obviously I see more faults and things by looking at my own work and I think that's the same for everyone but uh, you know just having the you know the the nice high contrast face plate uh, with a nice shine on it um, just elevates the piece for me so you can see that I'm still carrying on that process of pushing the highlights in the top left hand side now uh, just be aware I'm not going to leave the bottom right hand uh, corner of the face plate pretty much unpainted so there, there is some uh, of the uh, Mornfang brown on there already and because of the way that I painted that remember I was painting up towards the highlight and what happens is when you drag your brush in a certain direction you get less paint where the brush first touches and more paint where you uh, take the paintbrush off so you get almost like a little pool of paint extra where you take the brush off the model and because of that uh, you build the paint up uh, quicker that you know the layers become more opaque in those areas where you know you stop painting um, so it's like a, it's an interesting way of building up highlights with just limited uh, with a limited amount of color Here you can just see I'm adding some random little highlights in now these aren't painted in perfectly and by the way this is using Baylor Brown and the Baylor Brown is again quite thin down it's around about 50 50 uh, water to paint um, but you can see here just using the very tip of my brush I'm painting in um, like little extra reflections so you won't see these if you hold this under a lamp and this is uh, again one of the tricky things about uh, you know painting in uh, sort of non-metallic areas or just so I mean I say non-metallic areas but all sorts of reflections uh, will have multiple reflections on them all sorts of surfaces and one of the things I see when people paint just using the lamp references that everything tends to look the same and it's just it's a, it's a good way of painting to get the uh, you know to, to get you started but you really need to then afterwards make some effort to look at reference of things um, just to see how additional reflections work 
And you, they never need to be perfect, all these additional reflections. You can almost just paint random shapes in because there's no sort of rule for how they look and where they go because it could be anything that's reflecting in there. Um, so, but, you know, just try and make it look good. That's the thing. So you can see on the right-hand side of the face that there was a lot of dark areas. So just putting that little thin, you know, line sort of, that's not too strong down the, the right-hand side of the face. It just adds in, you know, fills that area a little bit. Uh, well, without making it uh, equal in brightness to the left-hand side of the face. So just at this moment, I'm just uh, jumped back to you know painting a bit more of the armor again. Uh, so I'm using a few different of these bluey green colors, and like if you don't want to do to use these, you could just stick with Sotek green and add a bit of white to it. But it'd be like a very small amount of white. Um, the thing is later on though I do add some ice yellow to it so it's going to get much more green for the the bright highlights but just to go over the colors that I'm uh, going to be using for the first stage highlights uh, it's so obviously uh, Sotek green was the first one now I'm using Araman blue and then the uh, the final color highlight that you'll see in a moment or two will be Temple Guard blue and so it's basically just the same sort of color just adding it's with, they're just a little bit lighter each time uh, and then from there I'll be adding ice yellow to the Temple Guard blue to create the uh, you know the final bright highlights and because ice yellow obviously has a, a yellow in it that will make the, the highlights more green uh, but because they're just going to be like a smaller area of highlight the gr it's basically going to look a bit like a green light almost on the armor uh, so it should be quite interesting anyway when you start getting to these secondary stage highlights uh, you start having to be a bit neater with how you do it um, I'm still using a size 2 brush I'm using a size 2 brush for most of the painting on this model and I've just been enjoying trying out using a larger brush for things you can still use the tip of the brush uh, I do find that you get um, significantly different marks using the size 2 brush compared to a, a size 00, zero which is my usual uh, sort of favorite and I do still revert to a size zero zero for quite a lot of the small details just because the way the paint flows off of the brush I find that uh, with the larger brush the paint just makes softer marks uh, so especially for something like freehand or super fine details uh, I just find it's easy to use a, a smaller brush um, because there's it's a longer bristle without having too much body all the way down so the the flow is very similar whereas with the larger brush just a little bit more pressure um, creates a lot more surface area contact with the the brush so you have to just use the very tip of the brush with a large brush if you want to do uh, fine details with whereas with a small brush uh, you can push that a little bit harder you can make a slightly fatter line um, with much um, less worry that it's going to go completely wrong in terms of the size so it's more kind of reliable with the, the size of the mark that you're going to make can see they're painting in the highlight on the top of the helmet as well uh, again doing exactly the same kind of thing as with the first set of highlights but this time just spending it a little bit longer you know just to make them look a bit neater I mean <laughs> and just as I say that I sort of like scuff the paintbrush all over the backpack uh, the backpack's not going to be painted up to the same standard as the face and chest and power fist uh, because it, again like so this isn't a competition piece it's sort of um, in that sort of grey zone of um, like a display piece that's not quite a competition piece so uh, you know but they're, they're more like just little fun projects for me to do and so I, I've done a base for it as well and I sculpted some rocks I don't actually show you how to make the rocks in the video but it's so quick and easy I might do a, a video on it just so you can see but there's nothing particularly tricky about it it's just milliput mixed with green stuff like shaped into rocks quickly <laughs> and, and that's it um, but yeah I will do a little five minute video just to show you how to do it so now you can see uh, we're going to be <laughs> I fooled you but most of you thought I was going to be doing the next stage highlights on the armor but <laughs> I thought that as well I'm doing the voiceover but um, we're doing some more highlights now on the face mask and you can see that so it's Baylor Brown that the was the original color um, and now uh, I fooled myself again and we're adding some more uh, if I can summon the strength to open this pot that you can see some more temple guard blue as well because if you look on the wet palette there uh, it's gone a little bit 
uh, watered down. I'm not sure why I'm putting it off the screen there, um, but that's going to be awkward for uh, you being able to see it. So I, w I was right. So we are doing a little bit more of the uh, the face mask, and again, uh, it's just doing exactly the same thing, but we're shrinking the area down. But uh, by this stage now, you have to be much more neat and controlled with the brush marks that you do. So it doesn't really matter too much now if you're using a large brush or a small brush, because you're going to be adding just small amounts of paint to the model anyway. The large brush might allow you to paint for a little bit longer because the paint will stay wetter because it's a larger surface area on it. Uh, but at the same time, you just have a little tiny bit more control with the marks that you're making. But because I'm not painting like sharp details or anything like that, that doesn't matter. So I'm, you know that's why I'm still sticking with the uh, the size two at the moment. You may have noticed on the wet palette, so I'm painting this in a slightly different way uh, than I usually work with wet palettes, uh, because what I usually do is put all my colors and mix them uh, so every color is pre-mixed when I come to use it on the wet palette. But for this one, I'm just mixing them as I go along. Uh, what this means is it's kind of quicker actually uh, when uh, for this kind of work, but it does mean that if I need to go back a stage that it, uh, I do you know, I come in, I run into a little bit of a problem because I've used up the uh, the previous mixture of colour. Now that's not too bad if the previous mixture was straight from the pot, but if it's one that's gone through a few stages of highlight, then you you know you're going to have to make an effort to remix it again. Again, to try and counteract that, when I mix the paint uh, onto the uh, the paint that's already on the wet palette, so you know, mix in some uh, ice yellow into there or whatever, then I try and leave some paint at the side of it unmixed so don't mix the whole color as you add the the new paint try and leave a little bit at the side so you still have some of those steps visible if you need to make a few corrections so here you see i'm going back in with some uh, Montfang brown and so this is kind of like the um well it kind of negates the issue that i was just talking about where if you have you mix up the colors as you go along then you you know you might find it hard to go back and make corrections so in this case i'd kept the Monfang Brown separate from the other colours. So that just meant I could just quickly add a little bit of Monfang Brown to the brush and uh, tidy up a bit of the uh, the transition really into the, uh, the mid-tones. You also saw there where I picked a colour from the mixed in highlights which was the uh, Bailo Brown mixed with some ice yellow. Uh, so I was a bit selective with where I picked that so it wasn't quite the, uh, the brightest part. Uh, so you can still do that, like I said, it's just that uh, you've got a lot less paint to work with and, you know, try not to make too many mistakes because, uh, you know, with the, the limited amount of paint that's available on those uh, little mixed areas, then, and they'll dry quite quickly as well. So for these little highlights on the, uh, the right hand side of the face, uh, basically all you're doing is just picking out the raised edges. These are quite nice actually on the, the face plate. I mean, it would have also been nice if the whole faceplate was blank, like an astronaut's uh, mask or something like that, uh, because then you could just paint all sorts of reflections on it and not have to worry about these uh, little details getting in the way. But having them here allows you to put these edge highlights on, which instance, instantly create uh, high contrast. And that just means that you know the it's a little bit easier to make things look non-metallic with the, the high contrast uh, light next to dark sections. When you put painting in the edge highlights, still remember to paint the up, up, <laughs> upwards facing and leftwards facing edges brighter than the lower edges. You don't don't paint all of the edges the same brightness because you still want to uh, simulate the fact that the light is coming down from the top left. You can see that I keep going over the highlight on the top left here just to make it a bit more opaque. What you'll find is as you paint one highlight layer 
that it looks nice and solid and bright but then as it dries it will get a bit darker uh, so while it's wet you can't really see the translucency of the paint with the layer below but as it as the water evaporates out of it then you will see those lower layers showing through whereas if you want the highlight section on the, the face plate to be super bright uh, then you need to get a really opaque uh, layer of paint on there so you just have to keep adding a few layers of paint uh, just to uh, you know get that opacity um, just in case anyone's going to ask there I am using uh, so I'm using ice yellow and it's a Vallejo paint color but you may be confused on the paint pot um, I actually prefer flip top paints <laughs> because and I know people are like oh no flip tops are rubbish you need to go with droppers but I like flip tops because I can control exactly how much paint I use so I can dip the paintbrush into the pot and just take out a small amount or a large amount or whatever whereas uh, if you're using a dropper bottle then you have to put a certain amount on your wet palette and then work from there um, so I went and bought myself some of the uh, large round pots they're kind of like the very early games workshop ones so a few generations ago now um, but they're quite large uh, so 17 mil, uh, milliliter pots so you can fit in uh, quite a bit of paint in there in fact if you uh, want to put games workshop paints in the, the larger pots you can probably fit a, uh, a couple of pots in but um, I do I do just find them um, easier to work with and so I've been transferring all of my uh, Vallejo uh, dropper bottle paint into uh, flip top uh, lids paints pots <laughs> Uh, while I've been chatting there about the paint pot you can see I've still carried on highlighting and I've gone straight in for pure ice yellow now. Uh, ice yellow is it's quite a nice paint to use but because it's uh, a very strong whitish paint uh, it's very easy to get texture build up with that because uh, white paints have like larger pigment particles so anytime you're using white you may find you'll struggle to get a smooth finish. It is always something to be aware of uh, you probably will need to thin it a little bit more uh, and do multiple thin layers like even more than other paints just to get the uh, the nice finish on them I have I have found ice yellow to be better than uh, other equivalents so I think there's a games workshop dawn yellow which is very very similar in color and you can use dawn yellow um, like if you mix it up and add maybe a bit of thinner to it or something it'll be uh, close enough to ice yellow but I uh, I tend to find that ice yellow in general just works a little bit more smoothly. Uh, it's not a vast difference, but you know sometimes even just little small things can uh, you know help to make things look a little bit better or easier to work with. So here I'm going up to pure white now. This is uh, P3 Mora white. Uh, I always say this but you don't have to use Mora White you can use like, any white color will do but I just happen to like P3 Mora White one of the other nice things about P3 Mora White is that they use the same paint pots as the ones that I've been uh, to, uh, emptying all of my uh, Vallejo paint colors into so it all matches anyway uh, once you get to using the white, uh, I've got my white thinned quite a lot here. It's about one and a half parts water to one part paint. So uh, if you when you have paint that thin, you have to be very careful with how you apply it because it's very easy for it to flood an area. And you have to use very tiny amounts on the paintbrush. Don't load up the paintbrush uh, with a lot and then rub it off because it can still have excess paint on when you touch it. But, you know, Just because the, the paint is so watery, uh, it just will run off the brush, especially if you catch anything that's like a recess. Uh, so you know make sure you're just using the very tip of the brush to uh, apply these this very watered down paint um, but uh, you know it's just exactly the same process again just focusing on the very brightest part of the model and you will need multiple layers of this because it, again it's so thinned down I, I, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video I do like the look of the face plates uh, if you forget that it's like a little space dwarf under there and so I think it's supposed to be that the uh, he has his glasses in the middle I think that's at least what most people paint it at anyway but if you ignore that and look at the two little dots above it it looks like a little happy robot face uh, which is what I prefer to view it as but anyway now we're going on to highlighting the armor and so if you remember uh, I used the temple guard blue 
as the uh, you know the final highlight layer that was a paint straight from the pot. Now we are mixing in some ice yellow with it again. Uh, so you can see just about in the bottom right hand side there of the uh, wet palette. Didn't quite manage to get it all on the screen, but uh, you get the rough idea anyway. And so as I'm applying this, uh, you're doing you're a little bit sort of uh, controlled in how you apply it. Um, and if you actually look in the top left hand side of the uh, the wet palette, I also have the temple like some temple guard blue there uh, that isn't mixed with any colours. So I have like that and the highlight colour that's mixed uh, with ice yellow. So it just gives me a little bit of option to um, help to blend it in a little bit. Uh, but if you look how I'm applying it, it is again just using the very tip of the brush. And it's very scratchy, but focusing more on the uh, the highlight areas, and then the further away from those areas you get, the further out the the lines become. So, you know, the the like further away from each other. Um, also, while you're doing that, you can just see on. So on some of the power fists that I've uh, already painted and the lower sections on the shoulder pad here there are little dents and like chips and things on the uh, the armor and all you do is just pick those those out as like picking out the lower edge of them and it'll make them look three dimensional so it's the light looks like it's catching the the lower surface like it curves back in uh, like a little concave thing uh, but you can see here, I'm still doing the same thing again, where I'm painting up towards the highlight to, again, get that opacity on the brightest part. Uh, it's really important to look at the shapes that you're painting on this as well. These shoulder pads are quite interesting, so they have different uh, kind of layers on them. Um, and like each layer has a little chamfer going, uh, connecting one layer to the other. Uh, so you have the choice of how you want to paint those. Uh, because you know, if you just tilt the light slightly, it can make a huge difference in how it connects on these sections. But I chose to leave them darker just so that it creates a bit of contrast between the two highlight points. And this is again something that uh, you know, just holding the model under a lamp doesn't really solve for you because it'll just give you one way of looking at it. Um, but you know, it doesn't always have to be perfectly realistic as long as you make it look. Uh, good. So in this case, I'm trying to make it look high contrast and interesting, and having that dark line down the middle of the uh, the shoulder pad, I think is uh, more interesting than just having the whole area highlighted to be light. Same kind of thing actually for this little section that holds the the light on his chest. So it's just like a, an upwards facing flat surface. Uh, you have the choice of where you want to put the highlights on this because if you hold this under a lamp it's just going to show this whole the whole top section of that as being a light area uh, the light isn't concentrated enough um, to you know really give uh, like show a part of that that's highlighted uh, so you have the choice of either highlighting the bottom section of it or the top section of it so indeed you could paint right up next to the the round part of his head as the brightest highlight point and then have it going dark down as it gets closer to the round circle thing in the middle uh, which would be very similar to how the uh, the power fist and shoulder pad are already painted but for this I just decided to invert it and it doesn't look wrong when you look at it like these things are you know such a fine line between uh, how the light hits on some of these surfaces if you you know just from moving the light like a minuscule amount that either way can be right um, and it's more just a case of doing something that you think looks interesting So most of the brush work for this level of highlight is going to be on the, the highest parts. The more of these highlights that you paint into the darker areas, the less dark they'll be, the less contrast you'll have, and the less effective the highlights will be. Uh, and it's something that I'm always trying to stress to people is that uh, because what happens is that you spend a long time on one section where you've highlighted it up and you think, oh, so I need to spend an equal amount of time on other sections, so I just paint them all in the same way. And when you do that, everything looks the same. Uh, you can like if you want to do a, like a golden demon project or you know whatever ever painting competition you choose, um, you can spend equal amounts of time on them, but you still have to paint them darker or lighter or you know things like that. They have to be painted separately, so it's just a case of really focusing on uh, what you're doing and how the highlights look, and don't just you know get into the habit of be like oh so I spent a long time to make that look really good that little section, so that means I've got to do the same to all the other parts on the model. It's more of a case of no, I've just got to spend a long time on the highlights to make them pop out and then I can just have the shadows 
uh, so my preferences anyway especially for something for a painting like this you can spend a lot less time on the shadow areas to still give them like a rough textured look which they already have from building up the the paint layers to this stage uh, you know it was quite quick fun painting to get up to that you know that first stage highlight um, but really uh, most of the work is then done then you can just work in the shadows with picking out a few dents and scratches with this highlight layer so remember this is temple guard blue mixed with ice yellow so you can use a bit of that or if that looks a little bit light sometimes when you go depending if you go too deep into the shadows with these highlights the contrast will be too high you won't be able to tell it's sort of a greeny color or like a bluey greeny color for a highlight it'll just look almost black and white because uh, the contrast between them is so high uh, and it loses its color when that happens so if that's the case then you can go back to temple guard blue and use that for some of the uh, the dent or chip highlights in the the darker recess areas uh, one thing that i enjoyed when painting this as well is that i completely ignored these little rivets uh, rivets look really cool on models because they fill areas and uh, so instead of leaving them blank they give you uh, something to see on the model basically it just it adds detail uh, like and they look quite interesting uh, the negative for them is they're a complete pain in the backside to paint because they obstruct all of your brush marks if you want to do like nice smooth transitions and things and there's a rivet in the way it's such a pain because it just messes up like your brush stroke um, but for this I just completely ignored them just painted over them and didn't care what you will find normally is that the paint will then run into the recesses around there uh, but I just didn't care if that happened and because like for these final highlights I was just a little bit more careful and then I also painted the rivets in the same color as the armor so for the final highlight I went through with ice yellow and picked out all the brightest rivets with that anyway so there's still contrast between where I was getting paint in the recesses before and the brightest point on the rivet um, so that still makes them work as uh, raised highlighted areas uh, even though that I, I've been quite sloppy with painting around them sometimes it can, can be quite frustrating when you're trying to be neat and there's lots of detail on a model so you just spend all your time having to paint around things because you don't want to catch them with a paintbrush um, I'm tending to find more and more that if I can get away with just not caring about uh, if I catch other parts of the model while I'm painting something it goes a lot quicker and I have a lot more fun while I'm doing it it is obviously um, context dependent uh, so like if you've already painted 90% of the model and you've just got to paint another section then you really can't do that but if you're just starting off and you pick the largest section on the model so in this case the armor you can very easily afford to do that because it doesn't matter where you get paint you get paint on the trousers or on the gun or something um, you're going to be painting over it anyway so it's not something to worry about I think you can quite clearly see here as well how I've been focusing very strongly on the highlight point on the chest armor. Uh, the chest and face on this, as well as the shoulder pads really, um, they're such important parts of the model. Uh, and you know, just those few highlights, um, you know, to really punch up those highlights, it makes such uh, like a dramatic uh, look to the model. Here you can see I'm just using a little bit of dark grey and glazing this into the recesses on the armor. Now this is a purely optional thing and you just have to be a little bit careful when you're doing it. Uh, I'm just not, it's just knocking back the sort of greeny blue uh, look a little bit and it's adding kind of uh, an interesting color on. Now I think probably most people won't notice it but um, it does also help to blend in some of the textures so they might be a little bit harsh in some places um, and it just means that it's you know it's just adding a color um, and I think if you see the model in real life ever or like when you try it and see how it looks um, it just it does make it uh, a bit more interesting and also it means that when I come a little bit later to adding some weathering on there uh, it will help it to stand out a bit as well by uh, making it slightly darker and more neutral for the color of the weathering to stand out against um, just to as a note when I applied that uh, dark gray so it's Vallejo dark gray um, that's very watered down so it's basically a glaze so it's around about two or three parts water to one part paint whatever you do don't just paint in uh, like 50 50 water to paint for those uh, shadow areas because it will um, just ruin <laughs> what you've already done so here you can see I'm going to be painting in the helmet so I've left this part separate because one it's 
uh, like the most fun part of the armor to paint but also it's uh, really important that you get this part right so the reason it's important you get it right is the highlight has to match the faceplate uh, basically it carries on the highlight around the faceplate so if you when you look at the faceplate it's just like a, a curved surface but when you look at it as the whole head it's basically a sphere and that means that when the highlight hits the part of the faceplate uh, the the highlight should be circular um, and be part of the head at the same time now there is a like a, a raised element between the two so it won't be a perfect connection to make a circular highlight but because the armor is very worn any anyway um, it'll the, the highlights become more diffused on the armor so it's a softer transition going out so you, it doesn't matter too much of, that it's it won't be a perfect transition you don't have to like spend hours you know, trying to decide if we've got um, the highlight in just the right place but as long as it's close enough to make it look like uh, that it would be the same highlight And I think you can see uh, quite clearly on the top uh, helmet section here how I'm applying it as well that um, I'm just using the very tip of the brush for this so it's a very very scratchy uh, texture technique and you can see how thin the paint is as well because you get the little uh, pools of paint every now and then when I take the paintbrush off so that means it's uh, you know quite heavily watered down it's, like I said again, around about one and a half parts water to one part paint. But always test these things. Your paint might be slightly different to mine, depending on how long it's been out in the open. Uh, you know how much the paint has already evaporated. So one other thing that you can do on the painting, on the uh, the armor that I did, but I don't actually show in the video, is I add additional uh, bounce highlights on some of the surfaces of the armor. Now, if you want to go and take this to the next level, you can do bounce highlighting on all of the armor. Um, but I mainly just did it on the helmet because it's a nice round shape, uh, and also because on the right hand side of the helmet it's like quite dark, so it just curves around into darkness. But there's a strong uh, highlight from the trim that goes above it, it's like this sort of section here that I'm just painting in, and the bits either side of it. Uh, and I think those would reflect onto, you know, the bright highlights here would reflect onto the darker parts of the helmet. So I just paint in uh, a little reflection. But like I said, you don't actually get to see that. It's just uh, something to bear in mind. They're very easy to do. I mean, you've painted all the highlights on already. So it's just a case of placing more highlights on in the same way that you've uh, just seen me do. And here you can see I'm just taking up the final highlights. First two ice yellow, again, very watered down. It's almost like stippling. Uh, it's not really stippling because I it does sort of a scratchy motion and it, they're not perfect dots. So like if you do stippling properly, uh, then you get you know, really nice round dots. It just takes a long time, but they are super duper neat and uh, they look very pleasing to the eye as well. Whereas this sort of uh, mark making that I do is kind of stippling, but it's much rougher and gives a very different sort of textured look to the surface. So as I'm adding more uh, layers of this watered down ice yellow to the highlight, I am making the uh, the surface area uh, smaller and smaller each time. So as it becomes more opaque, the uh, stronger the ice yellow becomes. I mean, so as it gets smaller, the stronger the ice yellow becomes. So now with the armor done, we're going to be moving on to the uh, the trousers. Um, these I just did these very very quickly. I didn't want the trousers to be a strong focal point, and there's no point in spending a long time on them because they're just going to be uh, black. So uh, I've also managed to not get that in focus on the the wet palette, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, I think you get the idea. Uh, so you have the option here of either adding a small amount of white to black, uh, or you can just use something like uh, German grey or dark grey as the uh, the first stage highlight. What you'll probably find is that um, as you're applying this you can't actually see much of what you're doing uh, because there's not that big a jump between the black and the uh, the first stage highlight. It is worth doing though as you you know you go through the layers. So 
uh, I'm, I'm not actually going to highlight up with white like uh, like I mentioned I'm going to highlight up with ice yellow so all the highlights on this model have had ice yellow added to them uh, and that just keeps everything sort of uh, coherent like it means that the lighting hitting the model is ice yellow that is sort of a, a soft yellow light just got a little bit of uh, something on the tip of my brush there So even after adding that uh, extra little bit of ice yellow there to the uh, the German grey colour, uh, it's still not making a massive difference. But as you layer these up, add, you know, as you keep adding more and more ice yellow, and the reason it's not making a huge difference is because it's quite watered down again. Uh, it's probably closer to 50-50 water to paint, but I'd say 59-48, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, just for uh, water to paint it's just a tiny bit more water to paint um, just to, to keep it nice and thin as you're applying the layers but it's still uh, thick enough that you can sort of see what you're doing but as you keep adding a little bit more uh, ice yellow each time to the layers uh, and remember each time you add another layer it's a smaller area of the model that you're painting and so you get like the steps and layers you'll be able to see each step but because it's such a small amount of uh, highlight each time um, the steps aren't very visible and also because the, the paint is thin they're quite translucent so you still s see the underneath layers showing through you can see I'm just using the tip of the brush on things like the belt um, I'm going to use the same colors for pretty much all of the lower parts so all the leather and the fabric on the trousers and even the uh, the metal um, I can't remember what it's called, this little climbing thing. Um, those, you know, it's all going to be using uh, painted using the same colours, but the way that I apply it uh, is slightly different. Uh, so some will look metal and some will look like dirty fabric and then others will look a bit more like uh, leather or darker uh, leather anyway. And it's like a, it's good practice to do that. I've actually uh, I practiced painting a model just using only black and white, uh, just to um, show that you can create different surfaces, different materials, uh, using the texture, uh, like the highlights and things that you apply to the model. And you can still tell the different uh, surface materials rather than relying on the colors of things to separate everything out. It also looks pretty cool when you paint a black and white model. Uh, like it, then you can just pick like a one small area on the model, like a gem or something, and paint that in color. So you've got like one little tiny spot color that looks really cool. So you'll see straight away that the way that I'm applying this is very different to how I applied the highlights on the armor. Those were much more scratchy in the in how they were applied. This is much more considered strokes. Like I'm doing them quite quickly because, <laughs> um, like the lower parts of the model, people are just not going to be that interested in it. They're going to look at the head and chest on this. That's you know what everyone's going to be interested in. Uh, but it's important that you do finish off the rest of the model, um, even if it's just you know not giving it quite the uh, same uh, attention to detail as uh, the other parts. So still at this stage, the leather and like every part of the uh, the lower section has been painted in the, the same way up to this stage. So even the boots, uh, you know, boots, trousers, belt. Uh, metal things, they, you know, they've all had a like a bit of grey added to them. And always remember when you're, you're painting like this with a thin down paint. I mean, generally for for painting anyway, but with a thin down paint especially, always paint towards the highlight point because that will then build up that highlight quicker. Uh, whereas if you do it in the opposite direction, you're actually going to struggle to get a nice transition or an opaque uh, finish on the highlight. Uh, 
Also remember while you're painting these lower sections on, on the model, uh, you don't want to highlight them up to the same brightness or intensity as the, the top part of the model. Uh, just naturally for the focal point, uh, you know, the top half of the model is what is going to catch all your attention. And if you paint the lower section, especially with a darker color, up to a bright highlight like the way the arm is painted, then actually what you're going to find is that it draws attention away from the armor and just makes everything sort of look the same. So for this kind of leathery bit here, I'm pushing up the contrast on these sections. Now these are quite nice shapes and it makes them fairly easy to paint. Um, and it's almost like edge highlighting on these, uh, but it's just that the lower sections, you're just picking those out a little bit with a, like a slightly larger highlight and then the top edge that gets a, a thin line uh, just to pick out the details and then you can if you want just paint in a few scratches and things as well um, but you know the general body of the the leather areas that's kept quite dark and also at the end I'd do a, like a very quick glaze into like the, the mid-tones uh, up into the shadows of the, the darker areas uh, because that will um, you know make the, the leather again look a little bit darker Whereas for the, the trousers, I just, they don't want to be shiny, so uh, I can leave those just looking dark gray, really. There you can see quickly, I just swapped the brush over uh, so I could use some black that I have on the palette off to the side somewhere. Uh, just to fix up that little um, belt buckle section where I got a bit bit of grey on it that I shouldn't have. So it's, as you apply these final highlights, that things suddenly start to come to life on it. Before that, before adding those, when you're just painting grey on, it looks really boring and uh, like it's lacking detail and that you haven't painted it very well but as soon as you just suddenly uh, you know get to the high you know the bright sort of highlights and start picking out a few details it's like oh suddenly you can see all the transitions uh, and it looks a lot neater so it does tend to be the case uh, in some of this style of painting that you don't actually get the payoff for what you've done until right at the very end Whereas if you're more into, say, like heavy metal style of painting, um, it very quickly it will start to come together. You, uh, you know, if you paint one area and you paint the, like the edge highlights all the way around, um, you know, you just make them neater and neater as you go. And, you know, it's very clear what you're doing there. Whereas this, you have to kind of um, trust that <laughs> the, uh, the final thing is going to look correct because uh, right up until you've got to that final thing, it's, it looks a little bit uh, ropey. One thing you'll find when painting grey is, so again, I kind of like touched on this earlier, uh, but when you first apply the colour, well, it's not really colour, but you know what I mean, when you first apply the paint, uh, it'll look quite bright and strong. Uh, and you think, okay, so that maybe I've highlighted that a little bit too much. But if you just leave it for a moment when it dries, it'll suddenly become a lot darker. Uh, and it's, you know, not all paints work the same way in this regard. Some, dry lighter when you apply them so when they're wet they're a certain color and then they dry lighter other paints dry darker uh, it is just something that you have to kind of get used to it can be a bit tricky sometimes when you're you're doing that and you're trying to paint a transition and you can't like if you don't know what color it's going to go when you uh, first apply it or even if you do know it's very because you can't judge it as you're looking at it so you can't just rely on uh how it looks to to make sure it's working or not you just have to hope that, that that's how it's going to go when it dries um that is down to to practice though
but generally speaking though uh, matte paints will dry lighter and uh, satin or gloss paints will dry darker this can also be uh, dependent on manufacturer as well so if you've got something like scale 75 scale color they are very matte paints so when they dry they're going to dry light uh, whereas games workshop paints tend to be more satin so they'll dry a little bit darker um, but it also like each paint individually can have different properties depending on uh, what it's been made with so uh, and also how you apply it as well uh, so if you're using thicker paint that tends to be more uh, satin uh, like if it's a satin paint already thicker paint will give a satin finish whereas if you uh, water it down heavily then it will have a uh, a more matte finish um, but if you do lots and lots of glazing on it it will go back to being satin again So here I'm doing the shiny buckle around the belt. And so actually I lied earlier when I said I was just using the same color that was just gonna be uh, German gray highlighted up with ice yellow uh, because um, I realized I needed a different uh, gray, not in color, but just in like uh, intensity, uh, a brighter gray basically. Uh, so I just took some neutral grey uh, and just went straight with that uh, to put in the first base layer of highlights for all the metal areas. So that will be the belt buckle, uh, the, I still can't remember the name of this thing, but the clip and uh, any of, like he's got some little cabling on his boots as well, on his legs rather, that I also paint the same way. Now this is very easy to do to get like a non-metallic metal effect on these areas. You just... Um, pick out like a, an upside and a downside and so when you first paint it on and then you pick like a little area so in this case it's the bottom section it's got like a stronger highlight and then a little bit in the top left here uh, so you make those areas a little bit stronger then you paint like a line all the way around it um, and this is all the same color still at this point uh, because so and but the same thing is going to be true so I mentioned earlier how uh, when you do like edge highlights and things and this is just true for all sort of details that you're painting the upper left area if you've got upper left lighting um, those will have stronger highlights and any uh, highlights that are on the underside those should be darker um, but because I'm just going to be highlighting up on top of these the highlights that I've painted on the bottom will be darker so all I've done is added a bit of uh, I can't remember if it's ice yellow or white. It doesn't really matter. It's just a, a lighter color. Um, it should be ice yellow if I'm being uh, consistent with the, the painting, but it's such a small area that you probably can't tell anyway. And you can just see, I just pick out a few areas like the stronger highlight points on the model. Uh, pick those out with the, the lighter color. And again, you might need to do a few layers just to get the full opacity right. And you can see here as well, I've swapped back over to my 00 brush just so I've got a, a bit more control. Uh, and also because I find I can just see what I'm looking at a bit more clearly because there's less brush in the way. Top of the belt buckle as well. It's a strong upwards facing edge highlight. A little bit down the left hand side. So here you can see I'm just doing a little interior. So this is an upper edge, but I'm sort of breaking my rule a little bit here. Not really, because you'll see in a moment that I'm going to be adding another highlight on top of this. Uh, but I'm just adding a little bit more um, variation to the transition, uh, going from light to dark on the, the metal section. So it looks lighter overall. Uh, you know, it's a, a lighter color than the, uh, the gray on the trousers, uh, just to separate the uh, surface materials out. So again, just doing the same on the other side of the buckle. Uh, it is important that you paint towards the bottom section because that's the lighter section. Don't paint upwards when you're doing this. And again, that's for all the same reasons that I've mentioned before about uh, the, you know, the paint pooling wherever you taint, uh, remove the brush from the model. 
So this is why I said that it, like I wasn't really breaking the rule that I just mentioned because I'm adding another layer of highlight. And this is, so I've gone up to pure white, uh, P3 more on white. Uh, that little highlight there that you see in the corner, that is an upwards facing edge. I know it's at the bottom of the buckle, but it's an upwards facing part of the edge. And that's an, and that one on the left there, that's a left hand one. So remember the light is top left. And sometimes I just, you know, <laughs> I put a highlight in where I think it looks good. Uh, and that's one thing to really emphasize is that, you know, not uh, realism isn't always the way to go. Sometimes you just need to put a highlight where it wouldn't go naturally just to make things look better. You can see here as well on the uh, the little clip, you know, just having these final little white highlights makes such a huge difference. And you can see it's like super high contrast, um, and they look significantly different between the uh, the black on the uh, on the trousers. And by the way, so the way that I just painted the black leather on the the belt, that's the same way that I paint the gun as well. So. Uh, here you're going to see how I'm going to paint the green light on his chest. I'm not painting this as OSL, uh, just going to paint it as sort of like a gem really. Uh, so you can see here painting in the green, I've used, uh, I think it's Warpstone Glow, yeah. And Warpstone Glow, it's a really nice green colour, but it has, for me anyway, other people have told me theirs is fine, but uh, for me it has horrible coverage. So I had to apply this and then it took ages. So I had to do a cut in the video while I was waiting for it to dry. Uh, you know, I suppose if you did thinner layers and uh, they would dry quicker and then you could do multiple layers, but thinner layers for this means that you hardly see what you you know, any difference. Uh, and I just wanted to get some green on there. So I kind of overloaded it. Normally I would recommend that people don't do that. Uh, but in this case, it, um, you know, I just want to speed the process up a bit. So the next stage here <laughs> is to add a highlighter green. So all I've done is added a small amount of ice yellow to the, uh, not ice yellow, sorry. Well, it's a little bit of um, Uriel yellow uh, to the uh, the green. So, so we well, basically you can see, so you've got the warp angle at the top, uh, yellow at the bottom and then there's the intermediary between the two um, you know for the different highlight stages and it's probably not quite 50 50 if you want to add more stages of green you can do for the transitions going up to the yellow uh, I find that for such a small area it's not worth it really though uh, the main thing to get right on this is just the highlight placement again so for the first stage highlight where it's the uh, warp zone glow mixed with the Uriel yellow uh, basically what you want to do is paint like a sort of a, a roundish kind of shape in the top left and then paint a circle all the way around on the outside and make it nice and neat when you do it uh, a little bit of stippling might help in this case then going for the Uriel yellow. You don't have to use Uriel yellow, like any of the yellows will do really, but um, you know, it's just one that I had to hand. Uh, you can see here, I'm just going back to the Warpstone Glow. So the transition between the Warpstone Glow and the Warpstone Glow mixed with the Uriel yellow was a little bit harsh. Uh, and because the Warpstone Glow is so translucent anyway, it's very easy to just sort of glaze over it. Uh, and it just fixes, you know, makes the transition a lot softer. Then we're going in with just Yule Yellow on its own. So now what we're doing is just painting like a little dot basically in the top left in the middle of the, um, I say a little dot, it's a, it's a big dot. Like you have to paint it on, you can't just do a dot with a brush, you have to like smooth it around a little bit. Uh, in the top left on the circle that you painted before and then on the bottom right uh, you cover in some of the edge highlight that you've done don't paint this edge highlight all the way around uh, you're just looking for a, a small section on the lower right You might find that because the UL yellow is also a little bit, 
it, you know, it doesn't have great coverage that so you might need to do multiple layers of this as well. It's not such a bad thing though because it, again it just means that you can add multiple layers and it will help you with the transition uh, rather than if you put like if you had a really opaque paint and you put like a little dot there and you're like well that's a big jump between that and the previous color uh, then it's a lot harder to fix so sometimes having translucent paints or paints that don't cover very well uh, they can be really handy for uh, making uh, transitions and things just making soft marks and then the final highlight is just going to be some ice yellow with a dot in the middle of the circle again and this is like more like a proper dot and then a little tiny mark again on the bottom right of the circle yeah. and you might have to go over it a few times just to uh, get the paint to leave the brush <laughs> Then if you want uh, so here I'm going back to the Uriel yellow and I'm just going to touch the edges of the ice yellow on there and this will make it uh, look more yellow so remember how I said the yellow is very translucent and the ice yellow is uh, less translucent so it's more opaque uh, but when you add the yellow on top of the ice yellow because the ice yellow is a light color that will make it uh, the yellow stand out more cleanly because it's a light color whereas if you you know when you add the yellow on top of the green because that's a dark color uh, it doesn't stand out quite as strongly. So now I'm going to be painting the kind of gun glow. Um, it's kind of like a, an OSL effect but I'm not going to be doing any uh, OSL <laughs> anywhere else so it's going to look like the the, the red is glowing basically um, but usually if you do something like this you'd have like red glow on the armor and all that kind of thing uh, usually massively overdone you'd never get a glow coming like that unless you're in a really dark environment and because I've already got quite strong uh, light hitting the model then it's really unlikely that a very strong red glow would um, highlight much of the model because I would imagine that the primary light source would be overpowering um, but you know, just painting in the uh, the little red uh, glow on this is just a, a fun little thing to do. Uh, so starting with Mephiston red, and again, fairly watered down. Uh, this will be really helpful having this watered down because it'll run into all the recesses. Um, get some in the recesses in between the gun plates as well, uh, and also you're going to paint a little glow all the way around the coils. Uh, this uh, so this paint certainly needs to be watered down for that kind of effect for and when you're applying that you start further away from the coils and paint towards them and this is on the armor you know the, the flat part of the gun um, you know paint always towards the uh, the middle section uh, because that will be the brightest if you find that you've mixed your um, fist in red and it's still a bit thick and so when you've painted on the glow all the way around the coils uh, so on the black section of armor of the gun and you find that the red is too strong, all you have to do is take some uh, black paint, mix it with some of the fist and red, and then you can just paint, uh, water it down a bit again, and then just paint in uh, the transition going between the black and the red, and you'll, it'll uh, create a softer transition then. So next step is to use uh, Evil Sun Scarlet, and uh, it's going to be a very similar process all the way around, but um, you're focusing on the top of the coils and the bottom of the coils, and then all the way around and a little bit in the uh, recesses between the armor panels on the guns and also uh, between each uh, section of coil as well uh, I can't remember if I, I show myself doing it on this one or not um, the, the main thing is it's important to get the uh, basically around the the edge of the the coils that's where it needs to really be but um, I do add glow in the middle as well the only problem with OSL uh, you know these kind of glow effects is that uh, you tend to have to look at them on a very specific angle because they don't actually glow uh, and this is a problem with uh, this model in one filming this uh, OSL effect uh, and also just taking photos of it is that the gun is angled slightly down and what that means is that 
for the recesses which will be the brightest parts on it um, they tend to get cut off in the photos so the, the angle in the recess sort of hides some of the highlight paint in there uh, so it doesn't actually work quite as well from certain angles just because it's uh, angled downwards but I think for this fortunately anyway the uh, the red paint is strong enough that uh, you know that on its own uh, works pretty well anyway so this next one is uh, Wild Rider Red and here you can see that I am painting in between the, uh, the coils uh, as well each separate one don't worry about being perfectly neat on this as well uh, you know you might find that you're catching on top of these uh, little cable parts uh, because at the end when we've painted all the highlights in for this all the glow effect we're going to go back with Mephiston Red and just paint over those so they look dark red and contrast um, and you know that's a lot easier to do so uh, you know like I said don't worry it's more important to get the highlight colors down than to worry about getting paint on the uh, the raised areas so this is Troll Slayer Orange I've got Troll Slayer Orange and Fire Dragon Bright here uh, you don't need to use both really. Um, I've taken this a few steps too uh, far for the uh, different highlight colours. Um, I mean it gives you all the steps I suppose, or <laughs> gives you enough steps so it's a nice transition but it's only a small area so it's not really worth spending that amount of time on it and I think you could actually just skip straight to the Fire Dragon Bright here uh, and really I mean it's pretty obvious where I'm going to be applying the highlights now so it's still going to be on you know the top section and the bottom section but each time that you apply these the area gets a little bit smaller uh, so it just becomes the sort of center part of the gun that picks up the highlights And here again with the ice yellow and this is just going into the uh, the very brightest parts the hottest parts on the weapon so top and bottom of the coil don't use too much of this more of this you use the less red it will look and it start to look uh, kind of pinky actually So here I've just come back with the Evil Sun Scarlet and just on the the section of the gun armor closest to uh, the coil I'm just highlighting those up a little bit more punching up the brightness a tiny bit more uh, to sort of emphasize the glow more you do have to be very careful about doing this uh, the best red on the, the palette is the Mephiston Red uh, and that's generally quite you know, quite a strong uh, clean red. The Evilson Scarlet is it's also definitely a red but it's got like a hint of uh, yellow in it uh, so the more of that you add the less red the uh, the gun will look. You need to make sure that the Mephiston Red is kind of visible and also is a, a much bigger step between uh, Mephiston Red and the Black than the... no there's a much bigger step between the Evil Sun Scarlet and the Black than there is between the Mephiston Red and the Black. Now I've already said that between the Mephiston Red and the Black that you might need to mix it uh, like a small amount of Black into some Mephiston Red to get red to get the transitions around the edge of the glow but um, like if you just used Evil Sun Scarlet uh, then you you know it's a lot harder to get that transition in there just because there is such a big jump between that color and the black. You can see I'm using my fist in red now uh, just to paint over the coils on the gun so we get the high contrast and you can see the uh, glowy parts well they you know they look uh, stronger next to the darkness of the coils so off camera I did spend a little bit of extra time just cleaning this up and I picked some of the oranges and wild rider red and just edge highlighted uh, all the way around any of the edges on the the gun armor uh, just to create a bit of a stronger definition and you'll see that in the photograph at the end so now we're going to make the uh, the boots and the trousers a bit dirty starting with Monfang Brown and this is really watered down this is about two parts water to one part paint 
and uh, the reason for that is so that the paint floods into the recesses. If you look on the right hand side, uh, his left, our right, you see the boot that's already painted there and um, that you can see how all in the crevices and things it's really kind of light dirt and then it's darker as it gets further away from that. So that's the effect that I'm going for and that's uh, you know that's why the paint needs to be watered down quite a lot uh, so that when it touches any of these recesses that's where the paint kind of draws itself you know the capillary action from the water pulls all the paint into the recesses. You might need to do two or three layers of this just to build up the paint enough but the nice thing about that is you know having the really thin paint when painting in the, the sort of the mud marks on the legs it means that you can again do a nice transition on it even though like it wants to be a bit textured so a bit blobby and things but you have a lot of control over how it looks whereas a uh, thicker color it makes a very strong mark whereas you know the watered down paint it's a soft mark um, earlier on in the video you when I was painting the gray onto the armor panels I was talking about like a bit of weathering in some of the darker areas so here you can see that I'm using the Mornfang brown and I'm applying this to you know little patches and little dots and things around some of the rivets and in some of the darker patches on the armor. What will happen when you apply it over there is it'll look quite orange as a contrast. So it's a, an orangey brown color and it'll look much more orange. It looks like a nice rusty grimy color. Um, don't paint this over any of the highlighted parts because that'll make it look really bright uh, and ruin the highlight. So you know it shouldn't, you know, it won't work properly. This has to be kept into the recesses and the dark parts, uh, but it just adds like a nice little hint of color and makes it look like his armor is quite dirty and grimy. which I think is a really nice contrast and against the faceplate as well. And it's quite quick to do like, because again that capillary action means you just have to like touch the model and the paint just flows into the recesses. Uh, so don't spend too long doing it but you know just a few dots here and there um, and it can really just make a little, uh, quite a bit of a difference in the sort of the atmosphere of the model. Now it depends what you want to class it as. Like if it's rust, then uh, you probably don't want to put too much of this on the leather. But I'm using it as more of like a dirt effect. Uh, that's why it's the same color for the uh, the boots and things as well. Um, so the idea is that he's not using any items that would be rusty, uh, because really, like you know, for this uh, futuristic element, I suppose rust is not the, um, not something that should really happen. Although you know, I love to paint rust on my Imperial Fist or my Death Guard, so you know, whatever. But um, in terms of this, uh, the painting on this, it's more of like the grimy effect. The other color that you can see there on the wet palette is XV88, and this isn't quite as orange as the uh, the Mornfang Brown, but it is a nice highlight color for it. Uh, but because it isn't quite as orange, you want to be very very careful with how you apply it because it's just highlighting, so it's kind of like inverse highlighting in the recesses. Uh, so if you see a recess area, uh, you know a prickly deep recess area, then pop a little bit of this water down again. The capillary action uh, will do the job for you, and then. Uh, again same thing you know just look all around a little bit on the trousers a few dots and things uh, you know just to to add a few highlights and a bit of definition uh, one thing I didn't show you when I was applying the Mornfang Brown is that I did glaze over completely the little circular discs on his ankles uh, th these are painted in his armor colors and uh, you know I, I thought it would just be uh, look a little bit better if those had a quick layer of Mornfang Brown. Now you can see how watered down Mornfang Brown is from that because even though they were given a layer of the colour um, it only just makes them look a slight bit dirty. You can still see that they're armour coloured. And here you can see just uh, again I'm using the uh, the XV88 just in the recesses, a few spots here and there, very very limited in how it's used but just to create little highlight points um, into the recesses. And uh, that's that's the model finished pretty much. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is just show you very quickly how to paint the base. Now remember, I said like I didn't show you how to make the base, uh, 
but I will do a quick five minute video on how it's done. Um, but you could just get some rocks out of the garden, like pebbles or whatever, and stick their model on those. You know, people need their tactical rocks just to help them see the enemy. Uh, but you can see this is mounted on a, a little plinth anyway, so uh, this is clearly not meant as a gaming piece. But I'm using Deathworld Forest here. And again, it's quite watered down. Remember, it's black uh, primer base coat. And this is a uh, very, very similar process to how I've painted all the armor on it. You will want to use the larger brush for this. I'm using size two, but you could go even larger if you wanted. And what you're doing is just looking at how light hits the shape of the rocks, uh, paint towards those highlight points. You can be very rough with how you apply it because you don't just want to uh, paint towards the highlight because you need to cover the whole rock. Uh, so it's you know you don't want to leave black patches on there um, but you do want to pay more attention to the light hitting certain areas so you'll go over those more uh, so the the opacity of the color builds up more on those bits and then in the darker recesses um, it's just like one or two layers rather than three or four that you'll need for the uh, the brighter parts but you're going to be doing this uh, multiple times as we go up through the highlight stages uh, try not to get any of this on the model uh, for anyone interested the the sand on the base it's just PVA and then sand glued on uh, left to dry and then obviously uh, prime black and it's dry brushed with Montang Brown uh, then uh, XV88 and Baylor Brown uh, more gas bone and screaming skull uh, and you know gradually as you do each one it gets less and less you know so it's basically you create a sort of a ring around the base and then I just went back with a little bit of Mornfang Brown just near the rocks uh, to like soften it down a little bit but you know you can paint whatever color base you want really I've just used the Death World Forest for <laughs> the uh, the rocks on this uh, just because uh, it keeps in like sort of line with the sort of greeny kind of color um, overall on the thing on the piece it's like a, a nice atmosphere for the, the whole model so on the rocks I'm not too bothered about getting texture marks and things very similar to the armor painting really uh, I just want it a little bit smoother than that oh and by the way when painting the armor if you find when you've painted in the textures on it and it's a little bit rougher than you want you need to smooth it down a bit especially for the highlights just turn the highlight color which remember was temple guard blue mixed with ice yellow uh, just turn that a bit into a glaze so mix it down around about three or four parts water to one part paint and just paint it on in very soft smooth strokes from around about the mid-tone up to the highlight point uh, a couple of layers of that will really smooth down any of the uh, texture marks but you, you be quite careful with how you apply it because you don't want to wipe out all the texture marks on the armor because obviously you spent a long time getting all that on there um, but you know just if you need anything to look a bit smoother it can really help having a few glazes so here you can see with the death world forest i've added some ice yellow to it now and i'm just doing exactly the same thing again but just being a little bit more kind of precise in how I apply the highlights now. So I'm looking for shapes that I've sculpted on, and I say sculpted in the loosest possible way. And I'm just looking for the like the interesting raised bumps that are catching the light. it really is just a case of just doing this over and over it's very very simple but it is easier with a larger brush and you can see I'm just looking at some of these little sculpted marks that I've left on there and just picking those out with the tip of the brush as well so there are some sort of like harder marks on there uh, along with all the, uh, the soft uh, brush large brush strokes uh, for the general shape of the rocks I think you can see uh, how this color when you apply it uh, it looks quite light and then slowly as it dries it becomes darker 
Uh, it looks also a, like a slightly different color as well. It's more yellow when you first apply it. Uh, so you can see like the, the whiter pigment from the ice yellow in there. Um, but as it dries, uh, it loses some of that yellow look to it. So again, a little bit more ice yellow. And again, same process over, over and over. Uh, but always remember, you're doing it in a smaller area, refining more each time, uh, and just as you you know get further along with the process, looking for more and more details, just trying to be a bit neater each time, um, just so that it looks a little bit more kind of finished. If you wanted to be, uh, you know, take this a stage further as well for your painting, what you could actually do, and I was tempted to do this, I just decided that I'd spent enough time on the model, uh, but paint some shadows coming from the boots going over the rock. I think that would look quite cool. It's something that I'm thinking of doing with uh, more for future models is painting on cast shadows. Uh, I think it looks really kind of interesting. It work. It only works with uh, directional lighting uh, style painting on the model. So I've painted this in the right way. I could paint cast shadows uh, with this kind of painting. What would have happened if I painted cast shadows on the model generally overall on this is that the gun arm would have cast a big shadow going straight down over the chest. It would have been quite interesting to paint, up, paint on it but it might have just cast too big a shadow. Um, I don't know, well, we'll never know because I haven't done it, but um, yeah, it is something that I will be exploring a little bit more anyway. Uh, but the reason it won't work for something that's uh, where it has equal lighting all the way around is because you wouldn't be able to tell a light direction, so that you know, just naturally wouldn't be any shadows. You can see the rocks here as so I've added uh, more and more layers, and it's built up the opacity with the highlights. Uh, that it, um, it creates a bit more shape to the rocks. You can see creases and things in them. So this is going to be the uh, the final stage of highlight on the rocks. Uh, again, more ice yellow added to it. Uh, I think you can see how watered down it is. It, uh, it's not super important to have it this watered down, I suppose. You will get a very different mark effect though uh, if you have the paint a bit thicker. So this, by painting it like this and doing quite a lot of layers of very very thin paint, uh, it transitions quite nicely even with the very rough sort of painting style that I've used on it. Uh, so it gives a very different surface texture. Whereas if you have a slightly thicker paint, um, you will see much more distinct trans uh, steps between each transition. On, always remember as well when you're painting some of these details that your light position is in the top left so uh, highlights need to be focused on that point so even though you're holding it under a lamp or whatever to see how the light naturally falls on the, the rock shapes um, if you see like a little bit of detail or whatever on the rock then just pick up the um, upwards facing e uh, edge on it and it, that'll help it keep it sort of um, in style with the rest of the piece What I actually do as well at the end of this that I don't show you on the video is I gave the rock a coat of uh, matte varnish and I used a Vallejo Mecca matte varnish on the rock. You can't really see it in the photo to be honest but it does help to distinct, uh, separate the, the rock from the, uh, the rest of the model as well. Um, but that's it, that's the, uh, the end of the video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. 
Um, please subscribe. I've got lots more videos coming. Um, also, I have my Patreon and website, which have uh, additional uh, painting tutorials. And I'm working at the moment on an undead unit for Golden Demon, which has just been announced for the UK, uh, which is at the end of April in Manchester. So uh, if you're going to Golden Demon, you might see me there. Um, but anyway, as I said, that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.